tomorrow, Lil, if you want. It's John's turn to pick tonight. Well, if he wants to, he can, but if he doesn't, he doesn't have to. He's got your buddy. No, he's staying over there. Yeah, he's staying there, Lil. Lily. Lily, we can't have him playing the music. You can have him after book, okay? Because <laughs> Lily, no, you can't play the music while we're doing the book. <gasps> what do you think John picked? We thought it was ducklings. Oh, you! <laughs> you are a goof. It is ducklings. Hey, don't get your buddy. Where's your buddy, John? Boy. <laughs> I like the cooling. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, slide over a little, though. <clears throat> I'm going to take it off. No. <laughs> Lily. Don't do that. Don't take it off. Don't take it off. Okay, make way for the darlings. Oh. Mr. and Miss Mallard were looking for a place to live. But every time Mr. Mallard saw what looked like a nice place, Miss Mallard said it was no good. There was sure to be foxes in the woods or turtles in the water. Lily, this is John's book. Remember last night you turned every single page and you wouldn't let John turn one? So tonight John turns the pages. That? And she that? was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles. So they flew on and on. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice pond in a public garden with a little island on it. Very place to spend the night, quacked Miss Mallard. So down they flapped. Next morning they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond. They didn't find much. Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was pushing a boat full of people, and there was a man sitting on its back. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mallard, being polite. The big bird was too proud to answer. But the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water. So the mallards followed them all around the pond and got another breakfast, better than their first. I like this place, said Miss Mallard, as they climbed out on the bank and waddled along. Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings right in this pond? There are no foxes, and no turtles, and people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Good, said Mr. Mallet, delighted that at last Miss Mallet had found a place that suited her. But... Look out! Squawked Miss Mallet all of a dither. You'll get run over! And when she got her breath, she added, This is no place for babies, with all those horrid things rushing about. We'll have to look somewhere else. So he flew over Beacon Hill and round the State House. Oh, there was no place there. He looked in Lewisburg Square. Oh, there was no water to swim in. Then they flew over the Charles River. This is a better this is better class, Mr. Mallard. <clears throat> that island looked like a nice quiet place. And it's only a little way from the public garden. Yes, said Miss Mallard, remembering the peanuts. That looks like just the right place to hatch ducklings. So they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nest. Boy. And only just in time, for now they were beginning to molt. All their old wing feathers started to Boy, drop out. Stop. Lily, you'll go to your crib. Stop. Okay, do you want the rest of the book in your crib, Lil? Stop. 
all their old wing feathers started to drop out, and they would not be able to fly again until they knew the new ones grew in. But of course, they could swim, and one day they swam over to the park on the riverbank, and there they met a policeman called Michael. Michael fed them peanuts, and after that, Mallard called on Michael every day. After Miss Mallard had laid eight eggs in the nest, she couldn't go to visit Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. She moved off the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count the eggs and make sure they were all there. I like them sometimes. Yeah? You eat them. <laughs> you do? One day the duck... But I don't like to eat this crust. Right. I swear. One day the ducklings hatched out. First came Jack, then Cack, and then Lack, then Mac and Knack and Quack, and Pack and Quack. Mr. and Miss Mallard were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings and it kept them very busy. One day, Mr. Mallard decided he'd like to take a trip to see what the rest of the river was like further on. So off he set. I'll meet you in a week in the public garden, he quacked over his shoulder. Take good care of the ducklings. Don't you worry, said Miss Mallard. I know all about bringing up children. And she did. She taught them how to swim and dive. And dive. And dive. She taught them to walk in a line, to come when they were called, and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. When at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said one morning, Come on, children, follow me. Before you could wink an eyelash, Jack, Cack, Whack, Mac, Mac, Quack, Pack and quack fell into line, just as they had been taught. Miss Mallard led the way into the water, and they swam behind her to the opposite bank. There they waded ashore and waddled along till they came to the highway. Miss Mallard stepped out to cross the road. Honk, honk, went the horns on the speeding car. Quack! went Miss Mallet as she tumbled back again. Quack, 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 quack. Went Jack, Tack, Whack, Mac, Mac, Quack, Pack, and Quack. Just as loud as their little quackers could quack. Quack, quack! Their car kept speeding by and honking, and Miss Mallet and the ducklings kept right on quack, quack, quacking. They made such a noise that Michael came running, waving his arms and blowing his whistle. He planted himself in the center of the road, raised one hand to stop the traffic, and then beckoned with the other the way the policemen do for Miss Mallard and the ducklings to cross over. As soon as Miss Mallard and the ducklings were safe on the other side and on their way down Mont Vernon, Michael rushed back to his police booth. He called Clancy at headquarters and said, The family of ducks walking down the street. Clancy said, Family of what? Ducks! yelled Michael. Send a police car, quick! Meanwhile, Miss Mallet had reached the corner of bookshop. That's a person in the store. And turned into Chow Street with Jack, Cack, Whack, Mac, Mac, Quack, Pack, and Quack all marching in line behind her. You did? Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill, Hill said, Isn't it amazing? The man who swept the streets said, Well, now, ain't that nice? And when Miss Mallet heard them, she was so proud, she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle. When they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was a police car with four policemen that Clancy had sent from headquarters. Policemen held back the traffic so Miss Mallow and the ducklings could march across the street and right into the public garden. Inside the gate, they all turned around to say thank you to the policemen. 
policeman smiled and waved goodbye. When they reached the pond and swam across the little island, the little island there was Mr. Mallard waiting for them, just as he had promised. The ducklings liked the new island so much that they decided to live there. All day long, they follow the swan boats and eat peanuts. Lily. Cat, yeah. And when the night falls, they swim to their little island and go to sleep. The end. Great book. No. You can have this in your crib. You want water? Okay. Whoa. A little bit dripped out. Yeah, I left it. Left it.